Right, but but remember, this is the very first flying car in the nation, yes. so you have to start somewhere. Okay. So 20 minutes, 20 miles, 25 miles, good enough for the first one, right? Okay. It's going to get higher battery. It's going to get longer lifespan. It's going to get everything's going to get bigger, more, faster, just like technology. Remember when computers came out? In our lifetime, we've seen a progression yes. of computers. It's absolutely astonishing, yes. mind blowing. Hey, we are here with Heather Shertia from SoFly. Nation's first flying car is right here. So Heather, uh, give me the breakdown on where this all came from, who did it, and all the, all the good info. Absolutely. Well, the company that made it is called Pivotal, and they're in pa Palo Alto, California. And they've delivered five flying cars so far to consumers. So this is the fourth one to get delivered. And my dad and I have one um, on the East Coast, and it's 007. So um, there's only a few of these in the nation. This is the first flying cars, and you're seeing a veritable paradigm shift here because we're in a row of cars, and this is the first flying car that's going to hit the nation. So it's all electric, all green, renewable power, all that good stuff. So, so where did this idea come from? Well, it was started by a guy named Marcus Lang. And Marcus Lang is the inventor of memory foam. And actually, the body of this is made with cardboard with foam in the middle. So it's carbon fiber, right? It's two layers of carbon fiber. And then there's um, a memory foam in the middle, which is actually carbon fiber foam. So it's very light. The whole thing only weighs 348 pounds. Wow. So, yeah, very light. So. so now you guys are in production with this? Um, Pivotal goes into production probably next year. They haven't announced an exact date yet of the release, but it's coming you know, sometime within the next year. So I don't have good information on that. Okay. Um, now you said this is electric because we have this guy plugged in here. Yes. So, so yeah, Anchor Solix makes the, the um, battery boxes. We plug in, it goes into a quad charger here. This mm -hmm. is a quad charger, which is like a fast charger. Okay. And then it hooks to the vehicle on the other wing. Okay. So it goes down and hooks into the wing. So it's all uh, battery powered. Okay. So what's your range? Because you can't just pull <laughs> over if you run out of yeah, electricity. It's, our range is 25 miles and 20 minutes of fly time. So basically the whole vehicle goes straight up, up into the air and then it tilts forward. It's called a tilt aircraft. So okay. it'll tilt forward and then pick up some speed and then you shift into second gear. So it's like a two gear car. So if you can drive a stick shift, you can drive this, two gears. Do you have to have a pilot's license to drive this? You do not. And that's you what makes not. it a flying car. So all you need, you could do this with two weeks of training, a little bit of simulation time and then up into the sky. You could do it in two weeks. Really? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you get 25 minutes. 25 minutes, yeah, we basically go up, fly in circles, and come back down again. Or you could go point A to point B, which is a whole different thing, so. So now, what is going to be coming later? 25 miles, it's not a whole, whole lot. Right, but, but remember, this is the very first flying car in the nation, yes. so you have to start somewhere. Okay. So 20 minutes, 20 miles, 25 miles, good enough for the first one, right? Okay. It's gonna get higher battery, it's gonna get longer lifespan it's going to get everything's going to get bigger more faster just like technology remember when computers came out in our lifetime we've seen a progression of computers it's absolutely astonishing mind-blowing this will also take a fast progression okay so as you get bigger more as it goes with some of the batteries in cars if yeah. you want more range the batteries get bigger they get heavier yes which takes more energy to get them up hold them up as far as, as what we're talking about here very the astute question the restriction that we're under right now is that this cannot exceed 348 pounds on the hull weight because that's a restriction of the ultralight category which allows you to only have a driver's license if you see a two-seater or if you see a heavier vehicle, it requires a pilot's license, which is essentially almost like getting a master's degree. It's way too much for the average consumer. The goal here is to keep this consumer friendly, right? For the average consumer, average not your pilot. For just... you and me, yeah. Okay. I am a pilot, but 
you don't need a pilot's license to fly this. And that's what's so fantastic about flying cars. This is the this is the next generation, right? Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That sounds good. That sounds good. Now, are you guys going to actually be making this where it's like for two people, four people, maybe at some point? Well, whatever Pivotal has in their future, absolutely. Every flying car company is eventually going to make a two-seater, but the regulations will restrict the launch of it until they allow for it for just having a driver's license. So we'll see a lot of advances in AI, okay. and then we'll also see that auto landing becomes a thing and auto piloting becomes a thing so it's almost a hands-off proposition wow. and when that happens the government will probably in my prediction lift the regulations and now allow when it did this fly. whole thing get started 12 From years ago 12 years ago yeah marcus and lang did it in his garage in canada <laughs> and you made the first one win when oh my gosh i mean he's been the making them for 12 years no this is um this is about the 30th to 40th unit okay. to come off the assembly line. They do so much testing behind the scenes. So it's okay. been in development for 12 plus years. And um, yeah, it's gone through many generations, many iterations. So this right here is the very first consumer flying car unit to be delivered to a consumer. This wow. is Tim Lum's. Um, oh, this is his. Yeah, this is wow. Tim's. Okay. Tim's vehicle. So this is uh, number one into okay. the consumer hands. Now, how many miles um, does he have on it, on this? Um, Tim Not has miles, hours. I'm sorry. Hours. Well, we do it. It's a little different. We do it by flights. Okay. So he has over 800 flights. Wow. On, on this, this one. Yeah, it's the is most. He a pilot? He's the he has the most pilot time of any pilot on the planet in an eVTOL oh, aircraft. Oh, he's a pilot pilot. He's not just like me. No, he's just like you. He is not a pilot. Oh, in he's the not. regular conventional pilot sense, he's okay. a smoke jumper in the military. Oh, and he okay. does not have his pilot's license and he has the most eVTOL time on the planet for okay, any human. Okay. So, yeah, feel free to interview him. He's great. Okay. So now, tell me about you. Where did, where your flight? Your flight time rather. Yeah, I um, I got my pilot's license about five years ago, and my father actually got obsessed with this flying car thing, and he kept dragging me off to the Oshkosh Air Show, and we were trailing the, the founder around. We made fast friends with the founder. We made t-shirts that said, future black fly owner, and we made hats. We had these funny hats that looked like a black fly with little propellers on them, okay, and okay. we led their parade down at Oshkosh, and we just kept we just kept pursuing them for years. And so finally, when they launched what was called the Early Access Program, they said, okay, we're gonna call a handful of people to buy the first units that came out of the chute. And they selected five people, and we are considered one person. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we're a team, so yeah. So there's only five in the country, and there will only be five in the country for the next probably year. Okay. So. So now let me ask you the most important question. Yeah. What does this cost? 200,000. Yeah. And you can get a version that's 250,000. So the new version is called the Helix. So the Black Fly is the precursor to the Helix and the Helix will be out next okay. year. And you get that from Pivotal. Okay. So. so you guys market to regular people. We don't market. You we don't? Okay. my dad and I and Tim we're on the soar tour. We're just going across the country showing the off the flying cars. Okay, so okay. It so just, then the people that would buy this, what are they like? Do they live at an airport maybe in an airport community? It's or? all different people. Um, it's people who maybe have a commute to work that's intolerable. So someone that drives an hour and a half who's potentially um, his time is more important than his money and would buy something like this just to do a quick hop to work 10 miles away that would have taken him an hour to drive during rush hour you know essentially to hop over rush hour or you could be adventure you know adrenaline junkie like me or my father who's a tech enthusiast so he he likes machines and he wants to have the greatest and latest machines so or like Tim who's a smoke jumper and and he is a parachutist and he got tired of the long uh, amount of time that it takes to pack the parachute, take the oh, parachute okay. for only like one minute of fly time. Okay. And when he got in this, he said, boom, I can take off. And in 
have 20 minutes of fly time, which is way better than one to two minutes of parachute time for the same amount of effort. So. Okay, okay. Well, look, let's do this. Um, can you walk us around and just kind of show the different little parts of it, the propellers and all that good oh, stuff? Oh, sure so thing. That, uh, yeah. Let, can see that. Absolutely. Let's start in the cockpit. Okay, so you have the cockpit here, and it, the monitor is simply an Android pad. Okay, and then you joist, here's your joystick, and to fly by joystick, you go fast, slow, bank left, bank right, up, down, and shut down. That's it? Yep, that's it. Wow. Yeah. And, and then, one seat with your seat belt in there? Yeah, seat belt fastened. <laughs> not not <laughs> very little, cushy. <laughs> no, this, but remember, this is the, one of yeah. the first five. The next gotcha. version is absolutely beautiful inside. Okay. So. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's it. You've just got the joystick and you have a parachute, a parachute pull. For the whole plane. Yeah, there's a parachute, a ballistic parachute in the front. So if you get nervous or you feel like something's going wrong, you just pull the parachute. And as long as you're over maybe 150 feet, you're going to be fine coming down. So. Has it ever been deployed? They tested it maybe, I don't know, a dozen times or so, but... But nobody's had to do it because they had that oh shit moment. Absolutely okay, great. not. Okay, great. Okay. Absolutely right. not. So, okay, so I'll take you around. This is the radar unit. It shoots a signal down to the ground and it tells you how high you are off the ground. Okay. okay. So that's radar. These are called elevons. Okay, so they operate independently and they also operate together. That controls your bank and your yaw to twist around. Okay. And then you've got, these are floats, which is really cool because this is an amphibious machine, which means we can land on water. Oh. So, yeah, so these actually make it float. Um, there's eight motors. Each motor is electric. There's two batteries per motor. The batteries are, I think, 60 amp. The motors are 25 horsepower, and um, yeah, they are all attached to the wing. We have a landing camera here, so that allows us to see as we're coming down. Ah, okay. So, and then you'll see it's attached to right here. Here's the power. It's attached to the quad charger, okay. which is attached to the cyber truck. Take a look in the oh, back the of the cyber, cyber truck. truck. Is charging your plane. Yeah, there's a V2L port in the back of this. It's like a dryer port. It's just plugged in inside of there. So it's okay. got a really cool V2L port in there. We so literally it's like you're getting 240. It's getting 240 right now. It's getting 240. That's why we have it hooked into the quad charging box oh, okay. there. That's the okay. fast charger. Gotcha. We could also charge by 110, but if we charge by 110, we'd have just a normal wall plug going in there. But as you can see, it's got the, the big dryer jack right here for 240. Okay. So this has actually four 110s in there, the equivalent of four 110s. That's gotcha. why it's a quad. So, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so every wing has elevons. They all operate autonomously, and the motors actually get turned on and off. I say off loosely, but they come down to 30 RPM. So they're so spinning very slowly. They're Are they off? Sometimes. Okay, this was the most jarring. This was my biggest scare. My Really one of my only scare moments of flying was the very first time I flew. I was up to 250 feet, and I got hit by a gust of wind. And the wind took me higher in altitude, and the machine is controlled by computer automatically, and it said, oh, altitude change. She didn't organize that because the wind did it, right? So it shut the motors down to 30 RPM. When they go slower, you can actually see the propellers. It don't look like a blur. And I was like, oh! all of a sudden the machine dropped, the propellers turned off, well, off, slow enough I could make them out, okay. right? And the whole machine dropped, and I went, oh! And I thought, am I falling out of the sky? <laughs> but then they, as soon as I was back on altitude, they spin back up again and zoom off you go. So because it's computer controlled, it will take you, it'll control your altitude without your putting any input into wow. that joystick. So okay. if you're a control freak, that will catch you off guard. Not saying that I am, but. <laughs> <laughs> How high can you actually fly it? Safely. You can safely fly up to 4,500 feet, wow. but that's a function of your battery power more than it is actual altitude because the batteries, it takes more power to fly down than it does to fly up, which is 
bizarre, not sure why, but it's what we've experienced. And if you go up too high, you'll come down to the ground and you'll run out of power before you hit the ground. So you wanna make sure you don't go up too high. And actually the view is so good by the ground, you really wanna stay on the ground. Wow, so, okay, okay. Yeah, so this is rear wing, same thing. Um, again, small float in the back and um, that's about it. It's pretty simple. You've got some pitot tubes there on the top and some GPS. There's three GPS for triangulation. Okay. So we shoot down for radar, we shoot up for GPS. So there's always redundancy. There's always, you know, different ways of skinning the cat for every, for every system. Gotcha, so, gotcha. yeah. Okay. So that's it. It's a okay. very simple machine, but it's the first of the flying cars and it's the start of a revolution. So Okay. Yeah. Well great. I have the first interview or one of the first interviews. You do. One of the early interviews. You really do. <laughs> <laughs> well great. I thank you so much. Thank and you for coming by. No problem. Yeah, it's wonderful to meet you, Otis. Good, good to meet you. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Sure.